Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us on the overview of our deal sheet feature. So Target Recruit did build this basically for our healthcare clients. So I have a couple slides to get into, and then we'll get into the product. First slide is really just the agenda. You know, today we're going to review Target Recruit's deal sheet feature. Um, this was, like I said, created for healthcare clients so they could easily and quickly calculate and share rates. So all of this will take into consideration everything that goes into the cost of a healthcare travel job. Um, I'll start with a quick diagram uh, in what we focused on during the development as well. So this will give you kind of a, a mental structure of where the information is accessible and how we use it in the flow. Uh, and then I'll jump into actually showing you the product. So just a couple minutes here on the slides. Um, in Target Recruit, uh, we have what is known as objects. So these would be items such as account or client or facility, job orders, candidates, um, placements, and so on and so on, right? So it's it's really all of the various records, they're called objects. Um, you know, as you see on the slide, the objects that the deal sheets will interact with are accounts, uh, jobs, applicants, and placements, okay? And I have them ordered that way on purpose because it's the most common flow of data. So you start with a deal sheet template. Uh, these templates can de define uh, job burdens, expenses. It can take into account the GSA schedules, state and federal taxes, um, time off, uh, and many other attributes, right? A lot of different things that are considered for calculating rates for a travel position. So you can either choose to assign the template at either the account or client or facility level or at the job level. So everybody kind of does it a little bit different. Um, and it all depends on the amount of automation that you want. So many of our clients will assign the templates to the account level and then have criteria on the job that will populate uh, or they populate when creating the job. And it's essentially the rules for the automation. So it will pull down the appropriate templates from the account. So an example would be uh, a pediatric nurse versus a cardiac nurse, or maybe versus a physician, right? Depending on the primary discipline uh, and titles that you're choosing on the job order, it will pull from the appropriate templates at the account, account level. Uh, and then based on those rules in the template, combined with the location and bill rate for the job, um, you know, it will automatically calculate all your rates to hit your desired margin. And then as you just saw there, the next flow is over to the applicant record. So whenever an applicant record is created, that could either be somebody's applying online or maybe you've matched them to the particular job. We create this sub record called an applicant. And this houses all of the information regarding the candidate, the account, the job, the, the financials, you know, which are essentially this applicant uh, deal sheet is created. So, and th this is where you would really play with those rates uh, as each applicant may take different pay, right? So then it affects all of the calculations a little bit differently and it will make more sense when we get into the, the system. And then obviously the rest of the automation flows to placement. So whenever you convert an applicant over to a placement, it flows down to that record. And then some people just say, all right, lock it down right from there. It was already pre-approved at the applicant level. Um, others will have financial folks take a look at the placement record and make sure everything's uh, fine. So really, you know, the, the two areas we lock down the access is the placement uh, deal sheet and then obviously the deal sheet templates. The... Other um, thing that I mentioned we're going to go over is really the development consideration. So when we're talking to all of our healthcare clients and we have locums and, and uh, allied and travel nursing, so we have quite a few different uh, variations within the healthcare verticals. Um, we were trying to gather what should we consider when we're developing these, right? So you saw these popping up, complexity. 
right? How do we take something that is is really super complex and make it easy to use and understand? You know, a, as you know, these calculations are more than just bill versus pay. They include burdens, stipends, state and federal taxes, and several other items that affect the cost of the job and the calculations, right? A, another piece was the automation. So how do we mitigate human errors and really make this kind of foolproof and guide the user and put on guardrails to ensure proper approval processes and, and flows. So that was another big consideration. Uh, accessibility. So, you know, where are these visible from and how are they interacted with? Uh, and as, as you saw on the previous slide, there are options on where you start the process, either at the account or job. And then they're all interconnected between these objects. So you can see the data no matter where you are, no matter what record you're on, you'll see all of the associated data. Uh, and then obviously towards the end, how does this feed to our middle office for timekeeping? And how can we do tracking on it? So ability to report on deal sheet success, you know, as in what rates and margins turned into placements, not to mention, you know, what are your true expected revenue uh, would be from filling the role and so on. So these were all things that, you know, we took into account with number one being, how do we make something incredibly complex uh, become very easy for the users? So hopefully, you know, I'll be able to demonstrate that to you uh, and we'll jump over here into the demo environment. So if you've heard of Target Recruit, obviously, you know, Target Recruit is very configurable. The layouts can be changed all through drag and drop. So this is my demo environment. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek uh, really from a candidate record first, because I didn't have that on the slides. Uh, again, if you remember, I had applicant records. So on a candidate record, if I happen to be, you know, on Samantha's record right here and trying to reach her, I can click on this applicants tab and see the different jobs that she's applied for. Maybe I've matched her to. And you can see here, this is what the deal sheet has said I can pay for this, right? And then it created an applicant deal sheet for her because again, like I said, the automation will automatically create that. So I can either drill into those or maybe I just want to click on her application and it pops me over there to see it. Now on the application, you can see here, I have it underneath their resume. The deal sheet automatically did all the calculations on what can, what's the pay rate, um, you know, what's the total take home for the length of the assignment, what's the weekly, what's the lodging, meals and incentives, everything like that. And then it also shows me you know, what's my margin and potential revenue. And I can see here that I haven't sent the pay package to them just yet, and there's been no response. So we do have the ability to send pay packages uh, as well. You know, so I'll come back to that, but I just wanted to give a sneak peek of how you'd be able to see um, deal sheet information from a candidate record. You do go to their applicant here, and then you'll be able to see it in various ways. Um, but again, I'm going to jump, going back to the, the slides, I said it all starts with templates. So templates really hold all of the rules. Uh, you can have quite a few different types of templates. Um, you know, the it, you saw on the slides there that it could be assigned to the account, it could be assigned to the job. Uh, I'm on a list view here of all of my templates. And if I click the, the drop down, you'll see I categorize them. So I could see all my job deal sheets, right? And then the important thing here is by job, you can see what the total revenue and weekly gross margin would be. I could click over and it filters to all my applicant deal sheets, right? So I can see, you know, information about them. And the cool thing about this is I can do inline editing on any of these as well. So I don't have to uh, go directly into the records to make changes. I can just change information by clicking on these and I can do it in mass as well. So if I need to change several deal sheets uh, and maybe change some information, I can update all of them at once. So it's kind of being able to not only affect things individually, but also do them in mass. Um, and, and the reason why I categorize these in different list views is because I can, you know, like I said earlier, I can quickly see my most profitable potential deals um, and and make these edits on the fly. So, you know, that's that's why I have these different types of templates. And I'm going to drill into one now and kind of guide you through 
through these. So I'm we're going to be using Elliott Medical Center today. So I'll just grab the template that I made for Elliott Medical. Um, templates can be set up by managers, salespeople, finance folks, you know, typically whoever you deem worthy of the power, right? You, you don't want to give access to the templates to just everyone, right? You want some control around these. And then you, you can always let the recruiters play around with the applicant deal sheets. Uh, but this, this you want a little bit lock, locked down. Um, I think an important thing is the naming convention as well. So I didn't follow my own best practice here, but best practice to me is, you know, the account name, uh, maybe the state location and maybe the discipline um, or skill set that it's related to. Um, so in this case here, I've just named it Elliott Medical Center. You can see I can put in information like what's my desired gross margin. I want to hit 25%. Um, what is my default pay, pay rate or what's the prevailing wage within this particular location or the minimum I'm willing to pay hourly? I just put in a generic 15, but you can put whatever you want there. And then you can put other information in there, such as hours per day, per week, unpaid days off. Uh, you can put in what is the bill rate type. You know, what are the multipliers? Is it a flat fee increase or is it is a percentage increase? Um, overtime rules, same thing. You know, is it a flat or what are the multipliers for overtime? Uh, you can see I have a 1.5 percentage. Um, in here. You can put thresholds as well. So before it goes into overtime. So for example, in California, if they work more than eight hours, you know, it has to kick into overtime and all of those will be taken into account. And then federal tax, Medicare, Social Security, you can put state tax in here. So you can have different taxes associated as well. And then over here under the expense section, you can add additional burdens, additional expenses, or things that go towards the total cost of the job. And those all will be taken into consideration as well when things are being calculated. So you can see if I click new, I can choose the type, you know, and you can have various types in here. Um, you know, do I want to categorize it? Like, what is it? Um, is it a, a dollar amount or is it a percentage? Is it something that's taxable, non-taxable, or I want to make sure it gets passed down to an invoice? Um, if it's maybe if it's say a bonus that I have to pay out, do I pay it weekly or do I pay just the one lump sum per assignment? And what's the date it needs to be paid? Right. So um, a few different things that I can add in here, and you can have an unlimited amount of expenses associated to this as well. Uh, also, one thing I skipped over is the auto calculate section. So we do have a direct integration with the GSA schedule. Okay, so this allows you to pull from when you create the job based off the location of the job and the bill rate um, in the discipline, it will pull information from the GSA and say, these are the per diems that you, you need to pay based off time of year and location and so on. So once you have a template, like I mentioned, most of our clients will assign it to an account level or a facility level. So you can see here a pretty basic layout of an account. Typically, we'll put it underneath the financial section. So you'll see here I have a template, deal sheet template. I only have one there. You could have several. Um, and again, then the rules at the job level will pull it down. So I could also see information here underneath jobs and, and what the the deal sheets uh, calculated, okay? But if I bounce over to a job, when I create the job, again, as mentioned, you can have different criteria in there. So such as, you know, a discipline and a primary specialty um, or any type of, you know, different requirements that you have in here. And based off that, it will pull the appropriate deal sheet template, okay? If you weren't doing that automation, you could just select a template in here, right? So if I wanted to add Advent there for credentialing specialists with no GSA, right? Or, you know, I'll just go back to the LA Medical Center. Um, then what it does is when you save it, it creates this job deal sheet and then populates these fields. So you can see my bill rate was 175. It calculated based off all the rules is I can pay 93 to hit my desired gross margin. 
And then it kind of gives you like, this is what the weekly uh, pre-tax pay would be, my margin, and your total potential revenue for the length of this assignment. So it gives you this information and we can put any of the fields from the deal sheet on here. You'll also notice on this job, I have sections for the applicants, right? Actually, before I go into that, I'm gonna go back and grab this job deal sheet. So I'm just gonna open up the full details. Okay, so I can make changes here. Like if I don't want this pay to be 95, I could change it. You know, I'll change that in a second because you'll see that it will recalculate everything. But as is, you know, it's taken into account this expense. Um, and you can see it's hitting my desired gross margin. So it came out to 25. My desired gross margin was 25. It creates this pay package. It tells me what my total revenue would be, but what my total cost would be as well. So here's my actual margin, uh, dollar margin that I'd be earning off of this. What are all the lodging and per diem rates based off the GSA schedule and so on. So again, if I wanna change this at the job level, so it's 90, I'm just gonna copy this so I can make sure I go back, but let's say I only wanna pay 80 for this job, right? You can see when I save this, it recalculates everything. Okay, so it recalculated, um, you know, what my weekly gross margin is. You can see my dollar margin went up as well. Uh, and all of the pay rate and everything changed. Now this, again, because I'm changing it at the job level, it will automatically flow down to all of the applicants as well. All right, so that's one way you could have it. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put it back to what I had. And you can see it, it defaults back and everything is updated. Okay, so again, this is at the job level. Now, if you remember what I mentioned is anytime somebody is, applies to the role or if you matched them and created that applicant record, it will automatically create an applicant deal sheet. And all it's doing is copying the job deal sheet down to the applicant. And this is really where you wanna play around with it as a recruiter, all right? So as a recruiter, I'll be able to, I'm just gonna grab Samantha's overall application so I can look at everything. Um, but as a recruiter, this is where I'll want to come in to, you know, change things. If you remember, I clicked on this earlier from Samantha's candidate record, and you can see it's just a combination of account information, job info, um, you know, her CV, and then I have the rates and things over here. So I have not sent this to her yet to see if she's interested. So what I'll do here is before I send this, I, I know her desired pay is much lower, okay? So probably not a good example, but here I have her desired pay is 45, okay? And the deal sheet is telling me I can pay 93. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this. I know I could probably really entice her with the $80, right? So I'm gonna say 80 and save it. So you can see it's recalculated everything here, right? So now it's updated that, that pay package. So if I go back to Samantha's applicant record, right, you can see that information is all changed and the pay package information has changed now as well. So what I'm going to do here is I just have an action button where I can send the pay package to her. Okay. And this can grab different templates that you may have. Um, you can decide and we'll set up templates for you to choose from, but you can decide what type of information gets shown. So this is a pretty basic one, but it would typically be your branding um, and information pulling the way you want it to show. So you can see it's showing her the potential weekly, the total assignment earnings, uh, what the per diems would be allowed for meals, incentives, housing, and so on, right? And if I wanna send this, then it's essentially going to go in that template from my email. It will populate in here the sent date Right, so it'll automatically populate the sent date. And then when she responds, it'll come in here and update the, the response. Typically the response are either accepted, additional info requested or rejected. And that will also give you a notification up here when they reply, right? So you'll receive a notification back um, that they reply to this. So again, this, applicant deal sheet and these rates, if I happen to bring her all the way through the process 
and hire her and convert her over to replacement, that's when that that this particular information flows down to that placement. And then that's where, you know, again, it gets locked down. And, um, you know, typically you'll have somebody in finance that will look at it. You know, a, an important thing here too, around kind of like guidelines, I mentioned earlier about putting, um, you know, restrictions or guardrails up for recruiters. Again, there, there's only certain information you want to allow the recruiters to change within here. So typically it's a few criteria points, but, you know, maybe I need to add an additional expense specifically for Samantha that isn't associated to the job. You know, I could add that in there. Or another guardrail is maybe your desired gross margin was 25 and I have to pay Samantha a little bit more to entice her to take the role. You can have validation rules set up here that if I'm trying to make it 23%, it automatically gives me a notification and sends an approval request to my manager saying, can I, can I do this? Right. Can I, can I do this rate? And then the manager can approve it. Um, and the pay package gets sent out. So these are typically things that we work with our clients uh, during the implementation to figure out what are the variables you want in there for the guardrails? Like how much are you willing to flex on gross margin Um percentages and dollars uh, before we start requiring approval processes. Um, so those are things that you, we can easily put in with our automations um, with during the implementation. Okay, so I hope this was a helpful overview of the, the deal sheets and how they could be used. Again, the whole purpose of it is being able to quickly see information related to candidates, applicants uh, and being able to share that information and and move along. And again, you, the, you don't need to do iterations. You can always update uh, particular deal sheets here or, you know, if it's associated to different um, applications. So for example, if I go back to Samantha's candidate record and look at her applicants, right? You can see now here, it's showing that I updated this one for LA Medical Center to 80. Whereas for Navy Medical Center, um, she'll only be making about 55 or so if she takes that one. Um, so again, it's about ease of use, visibility, no matter what record you're on, um, and kind of putting in those guardrails so that it's foolproof and, and users can't screw up the information. So again, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us at uh, sales at Target Recruit.